Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today to pray. We will be reading Psalm 132 and Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. And the theme is a glorious future. I wonder what you think your future holds. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Can we know our future? Can we get a glimpse of what is to come? Well, the answer to that will, will be unveiled or revealed in Luke's Gospel. But first, Psalm 132, and there, again, here we find King David planning a future, committing himself to a future, uh, unrestingly committed to this future, and yet we find it's not that what we do for God, but what, for, what God does for his people. Uh, that really matters. We can have great plans, can't we? Great schemes and visions which we would seek to, to fulfil tirelessly. And yet it's not what we do for God, but what God does for us that counts in the end. Let's read Psalm 132. O Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured. He swore an oath to the Lord and made a vow to the Mighty One of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. Or I will allow no sleep to my eyes, no slumber to my eyelids, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the Mighty One of Jacob. We heard it in Epaphra. We came upon it in the fields of Jehar. We uh, let us go to his dwelling place, let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. May your priests be clothed with righteousness, may your saints sing for joy. For the sake of David your servant, do not reject your anointed one. The Lord swore an oath to David. A sure oath that he will not revoke. One of your own descendants I will place on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and the statutes I teach them, then their sons shall sit on your throne for ever and ever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his own dwelling. This is my resting place for ever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned, for I have desired it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor I will satisfy with food. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall sing for joy. Here I will make a horn grow for David, and set up a lamp for my anointed one. I will clothe his enemies with shame but the crown on his head shall be resplendent. Do you notice there are two oaths in this, in this psalm? The oath that David swore to the Lord and the, the oath that the Lord swore to David. David swore an oath to God to to not rest until he'd found a, a resting place, a dwelling place for God. He wanted to serve God, to make sure God was well looked after, well catered for, well established. Uh, and, and yet the tables turn halfway through and Lord, the Lord says to David, No, I will swear an oath to you. And that oath is this, One of your own descendants I will place on the throne. One of your sons will be on your throne forever and ever. And we're going to see how God fulfilled that oath in Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. He kept the oath to David that one of David's descendants would be on his throne forever and ever. And this is where we see that our future can be secure when we know who is reigning on the throne. 
the efforts that David put in to try and play, find a place for the Lord uh, didn't really count. But what counted was what the Lord would do for David through his descendants. So let's read Luke chapter 9 and see the fulfilment of God's oath. Verse 28. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid. As they entered the cloud, a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at that time what they had seen. Do you see the human instinct that was in David, that is in every in, in, in Peter? David and Peter wanted to build a shelter for the Lord, a dwelling place. Master, verse 33, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters. I want to do something for you. But the what really matters here is that God... The God of Psalm 132, who promised that his king, the descendant of David, would reign forever and ever, says, This is my son, whom I've chosen. Listen to him. Jesus was resplendent, as Psalm 132 put it, glorious in splendor, bright as a flash of lightning. And this is the future. This is a glimpse of Jesus in glory, Jesus reigning after his death and resurrection, now eternal in the heavens, bright as lightning, glorious in splendour, crowned with a crown that is resplendent, and we can only listen to the voice of the one from the cloud who says, this is my son, whom I have chosen, listen to him. Your future between now and that day is uncertain. Mine too. We don't know what's going to happen, what blessings and cursings will come our way, what trouble and strife and joys and sorrows will be ours to enjoy or endure. But we know this, the future is Jesus. And so will you look to him today, see him bright, and resplendent and full of glory <coughs> excuse me and just put your trust in him know that God has done for you what you cannot do for yourself just as David swore to, to not rest until he built a place for God just as Peter offered to make a tabernacle for Jesus Moses and Elijah so we think we might have to try and build ourselves a place with God and yet God says no this is my son whom I've chosen listen to him God's done what we need to be with him in glory just trust him let's pray Lord today we know that our future is uncertain as far as 
earth. Time on earth is ahead of us. We don't know how many days we have or weeks, months or years. We don't know what the future will bring as far as good seasons or hard seasons, blessings or cursings, joy or sorrow, pain-free or troubled. Lord, we do know that you have chosen your son and you have made him the king in the line of David who will reign forever with a glorious and resplendent crown who is shining brighter than lightning. And so, Jesus, we look to you now and we ask that whatever we see around us, our eyes would still be fixed on you. And we would know our future in you and through you and with you is secure. And that we need, we need build no tents or try to establish a dwelling place for you. Because you said you would do it, you've done it and will do it. And so we thank you and praise you that in you we find peace and security in a world of chaos. And in your name we pray. Amen. Every blessing. Enjoy the future. The future is Jesus, God's chosen King in the line of David. Take care.